You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Hannibal After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Hannibal After Show. Bing is for doing. Mm -mm. And we are doing the Hannibal After Buzz After Show. Oh, yeah. We are family. Oh, you know that we are. Aren't we? Like a little family. <laughs> uh-huh. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't think that, that, that lip bite flip out. That uh, that, that's, that's where I live, right here. For those I of you live, on YouTube, mm, yeah, mm. there he is. He's doing that. Thank you, Bingus, for doing. We're doing the after, the Hannibal After Buzz After Show. <laughs> you, I'm Joe Braswell. Oh, he wants to make he wants to make an ethically appropriate joke. He wants to so bad. <laughs> I'm Joe Braswell. I'm joined as always uh, by Joe San Flippo. Rocking it out, man. Just getting my game on, yo. Yes. What, what, your who? My game. That's there my game right there. Okay. Oh. Ha having game means you have to it's be able it. to say it. Damn it. It's a hot move. It's a real hot I'm move. I'm also the joined. The ladies are going to love that. <laughs> I'm also joined by my good friend, Julia Kearley. Hello. Hi, Julia. Happy to be back. Yes. And uh, and also, we also have Marissa Serafini on the ones and twos. Hello, everyone. Dropping Sister Sledge for us. <laughs> so, uh, we're, you know, so we're here doing Hannibal. Um, as, as promised, we are going back to episode four because episode four was not aired on NBC nope. for various reasons. I think it was, I think, what was the official reason for that? Was it Boston The, the Boston Marathon, Marathon is, is what was. It was actually, they decided not to air it before the Boston Marathon. I had read just okay. right right before. Really? But um, uh, they sort of they were thinking about it beforehand. Thought um, it was a little bit insensitive. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with Sandy Hook and Newtown. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and we're, what we're referring oh, to. Oh, was is, that was that more? Yeah, and I think the Boston Marathon. I missed. Really I, I, I got that backwards. Home. Right. So what we're referring to is the episode. The episode is called uh, Koof. Koof. No C. Oof. 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 Is there, I, think a C I, I there. actually really have no idea how to, okay. how to say it out loud. <laughs> I thought it was C E O U F. I think it's O E U F. Oh, oof. All right. Uh, Flippo, you're French. Well, I, well, I was going to say, we should have looked this up, kids. <laughs> you're French, is so, you're so stellar. But it's eggs, right? What is it? It's eggs. All right. We got that much right, right, right. I could say that. If anyone knows how to pronounce this thing, please, please hit us up on, on Twitter and, and iTunes and, and YouTube. Let us know. Um, so yeah, episode four, and while, while we're talking about the, the, the nature of this and where we're playing We Are Family is it has a lot to do with, with family and a um, created family and children and kids. And it's kind of a, yeah, a lot of kids killing kids and other things, not like in a Hunger Games way either. Which would not in that good wholesome Hunger Games. Yeah, way. Not, not, not the way kids kill kids yeah. in the Hunger Games. No, that, that that's a, that's, that's good wholesome kid murder. <laughs> they know how to do it. This this seemed wrong. There's, there's something about this didn't seem right. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my. I, I right. gotta say, I, I felt like this. You know, I, I don't like to disagree with Peacocks, but I feel like this was a bad pull. I felt I, I in, in going back and watching it, I feel like there's a lot of character development that got lost right. in this episode by by not airing it. I think that was. Uh, I, I think that was a bad idea to pull it personally. Well, the, this this is one of the things you're going to find. This is like the one weird drawback with network TV because you know you got to give NBC credit a lot of credit for a greenlighting the show, putting it on. It's super. The subject matter is ridiculous. What they've shown so far in, in way of violence and other things have been is has been insane. Um, but it's a weird thing where it's like re like we we have we're giving you guys all the autonomy to do the show that you want to do, and we have the balls to show all this other stuff, but then. And if it gets too crazy, we got like, yeah, we can't gets, show that. Yeah, somebody gets squeamish and it all pulls back. Yeah, but at some point, you know, when they they, they the, the network saw the scripts and they saw the shooting schedule and they saw the thing being shot, and at what point do you pull it? I wonder. I don't know. I know that they wound up breaking it down into six webisodes mm -hmm. uh, for people to view online in order to to retain the the character development. Mm -hmm. But I I actually agree with you. I don't think it 
necessarily needed to be pulled. No, I, I think based on what I saw, the the the, uh, the angels in, in the next episode were much nastier. Oh boy, that, that was a lot, lot on the, a lot more gruesome than this. I mean, this was disturbing because it was kids, but you never actually saw the kids shoot anybody. So I, you know, unless that was an edit that they put together to to to, to drop it on on uh, on the internet, I don't know. Well, it's a whole another debate about standards and practices in the in the in the MPA. Not the MPA, it's a film, but the the in the, the rating system, right, right, right. Mm-hmm. How that works and how you know violence seems to be the most egregious violence seems to be okay, but sex and showing a butt and showing uh, yeah, I, sex I had some friends from worst thing ever. I had some happen. friends from Sweden that were so funny when they came when they came here and they 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 moved over here about five years ago and they lived here for uh, well five years now. And they, they're, 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 that's how the math works. That's, uh, um, math genius. Math. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it the more you know, but it didn't come. Yeah. So sad. Math major over right? here. So they've lived here for five years, which right. means they've lived here for five years. So uh, one of the things they were saying, there and is. there it is. Um, in, in Sweden, I guess, the, the ratings, is very, they're very different. Uh, it, violence is much more taboo than sex. Right. And they will show sex and nudity. That's nothing, but they won't show the violence that we show here so casually. They just won't show it. Wow. So uh, that it was, it was one of the jarring things that they found about American television was how violent it was, but there was a complete lack of sex. And they, they found right. that to be a, a, the complete An outrage. Where, backwards. Where's backwards. Where's my sex? The, the uh, Swedes. Uh, where's, where's my Swedish accent? Where to Saxon? It's, an, it's <laughs> terrible. But that's what all the Swedes say. Where to Saxon? <laughs> I think we broke Joe. I'm sorry. What's the worst? What's the worst? Worst, <laughs> the worst oh, Swedish I'm accent so ever. Okay, I'm sorry. Worst. Yes, yeah, you did break me. That was That's incredible. Really, really. I yeah. Don't know what that was. You're welcome, America. Thank Made you. of my entire day. <laughs> Actor extraordinary. Again, Hugh Dancy's got nothing on Joe Sampolipo. Accents and accents. Oh, he's rocking his accent. <laughs> <Yeah. That's it. laughs> so, um, oh, yeah. So anyway, so the, the episode they, they pulled the episode. We watched it. Uh, if you want to find it, you know, obviously it's it's on iTunes. So you, you can you have to buy it. Of course, you can buy it. I'm sure for those of you who have other ways of of, of of procuring episodes of television that we won't talk about, you can find it there too in that other space. That um, you know, stealing it. That's yeah. fine. Whatever. No judgment here. <laughs> and then uh, and then um. And also the NBC version, which is what Julia talked about, which is sort of like the chopped down version. Episodes, yeah. Which we, you know, we want to watch the full thing, which we did, which we will get into. Again, they we, did call it the cannibalized version. I just yes, have to throw it out there. Yes, they I just did. have to. I have to say and, it. And unfortunately, the cannibalized the unfortunate version. Pun. They and did. And they it. said it they over and it. over again. And they committed to that. Yeah, they did. So right, they did. Got to give that. to them. Run this up the flagpole and just keep yelling <laughs> at it. They were very proud of it, but that's fine. Um, anyway, <laughs> so. Okay, so we're right. Um, I thought this Brian Fuller did that too. He's, mm-hmm, the, sure the, did. Brilliant, the brilliant writer Brian Fuller could not come up with anything more clever than that. Anyway, well, maybe right. they came to the office. Like, like, we got five minutes. We're shooting this. What do you got? Uh, yeah, we're <laughs> yeah, we're cannibalizing. <laughs> All right, so the uh, the episode itself. So we, there, there was a lot happening here. We had our our, our killer, you know, our, our procedural part, our mm-hmm. killer of the week. Um, our mystery of the week was we find Will who goes into a scene with a family at a beautiful dinner with some with some nice prime rib and everything else that's been really like we see the first thing we see is this like decomposing prime rib with maggots and this whole table setting along with bodies and kids and everyone else and it's pretty again horrific. pretty gruesome yeah. right yeah like who wants to see yeah. that um and then uh you know and then so we see you know will do his normal pendulum thing and and this time it came off as more the first time I really saw it as a monologue, right? Like does he does he always do like a full blown monologue when he when he goes into his pendulum thing, like the whole uh- I feel like the device has been used about eighty percent of the time. I feel like there's there's been a couple times he hasn't used it, but some well, but, the device the is part, used, but it felt like a, a full. But I mean, I, when when he comes out and he says, "This is by design," I think. Yeah, I wrote that down. Yeah, that that, that yeah. I think is about eighty percent of the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And also the you know the, the catchphrase uh, that sweeping nation this is by design. Also the the other thing that is what Jack says every time, which is, "What did you see, Will?" That's my bad, Lawrence Fishburne. But uh, <laughs> that's that's no Swede right there. Yeah, <laughs> you did not just say that. <laughs> How's that? No, that was good. All that right. was good. So uh, yeah, what did you see, Will? So anyway, so Will goes through his whole monologue of sort of breaking the whole thing down and how he saw, and that was creepy. That was really sort of like, I, you know, I, I'm trying to wrap my head around in, as a, in a general sense of Will because I can't, you know, I can't get a get a handle on 
where who Will is and where he's coming from. Like I get when he's in his trance mode and he's really sort of tortured by you know what he's seeing and he goes into serial killer mode. We see him talk to to Doctor Lecter in his one on one sessions where he seems to be um, still sort of tortured and and disturbed. I I just I, I I still don't have a handle on what this guy what makes this guy tick. I mean, do you guys have any like I don't. I mean, no, not, I, not, not I, a bad way. I'm just like I don't, I don't understand him. Yet. I've said it for for a few weeks on it. I, I just don't understand what motivates uh, a, a guy who clearly. I mean, obviously they're setting up in, in his mind the, the the choices he has is he can be a diesel mechanic or he can be this genius uh, of crim, this this criminology genius, right? Uh, and, and you know, behavioral uh, behavioral science. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, what, what, criminal criminal. Um, Oh, I can't think of the term right now, but you understand what I'm saying, right? But uh, I, I personally feel that if you're, you've got this kind of an intellect, you can do anything you want. And and I've said it for a few weeks. I don't understand why he chooses this. No one, I don't think I have not offered an explanation yet that that says to me like this is why Will's in this. And now I get it. Right. And it seems to me like he's being coerced and cajoled by by Jack, and he's being kind of railroaded into these one one case at a time and he's being guilted in but that only gets you so far i mean we need right. to find out what's underneath that's driving him to do this and do i think, haven't gotten there yet do you think he's satisfied um teaching it do you think he's satisfied because he seems drawn to it he seems you know to obviously very obviously connect yeah. um do you think he's satisfied though with just being a lecturer and just teaching i do actually i think that that's where it ends for him i think that obviously that he has this gift or whatever mm -hmm. whatever it is. I think he does enjoy the part of sort of, maybe there's a responsibility he feels like, I have to sort of, I have this knowledge, I'm gonna go give it to these people so they can go out and catch these guys. So I think the teaching part, the lecturing part is something that he feels, he um, not only enjoys, but maybe feels an obligation to do, which probably, you know, when, when Jack asked him to take that obligation one step further and go out in the field, I think that probably he felt more of an obligation that he did like or back out well, in the field, right? He was he was out there at some point. Well, he was. I think he was he was a he was a homicide homicide detective. detective right? yeah. but. He doesn't seem to really know how to deal with the surviving victims because look at his reaction to Abigail and his yeah. his uh, just being completely drawn to her. So I don't know how much field experience he actually has had. Yeah. Well, they've set him up. They, they they set up that his deal is 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 his, his ability to empathize with people, right? Mm -hmm. His ability his, his ability to empathize with with the killers. But I would imagine that would carry over into your ability to empathize with the victims also. I so, don't think so. That, you don't think so? Not not in his case. Oh, he seems one no, track he's, he's, minded he's, he's, on this. He's like he? one one bad you know something away from being a serial killer. <laughs> so you think that's yeah. the deal? He's like he's so he's yeah. so close. At, you know, he's well, he, yeah, he's like he you know, crossover. There's a couple of things. Um, one, actually, just one of the things that reminds me of that is, you know, Thomas Harris in one of the book in, in Red Rag in the book has this line, which is where they get the device from. It, the, the, the line is like, um, when he's in this trance, his mind, his uh, in his mind, the pendulum swings through the darkness. Sort of like that's his that that's his way of thinking. Like he's like the way he is trying to you know figure out what's happening with the guys is sort of pendulum swinging through the darkness of his own brain. That's kind of what that device is, represents, okay. I suppose. But um, getting back to that, I feel like that in the oh, in the scene we saw in this episode, in that one-on-one -on -one scene with him and Hannibal, um, and when he's talking to, talking to Lecter about how he felt about, um, you know, in, inhabiting the mind of the, his, minds of these serial killers, he, it sounds like he's really close, like he's really close, too close. It doesn't like the fact that he's so close to being able to empathize with these guys. And it feels like he's one step away from being one of those guys. Absolutely. I don't know. That's how so I read you, it. So you think he walks so close to the darkness he could cross over any time right in, and, and, and be right over there? You think yep. that's And that's what terrifies him? That's what scares him. I got you. Okay. Well, maybe that's why he's doing it. Maybe that's why he's in this profession, to to keep those images in front of him so he doesn't, so he's not left to his own devices right. and and stumble into to a life like that. I don't know. Right. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, no, it does make sense. That makes complete sense. Um, well, let's get into this kit, like, really, it's back, back in the episode itself. So before we do that, I do want to thank you guys, continue to thank you guys for, for, for downloading us on iTunes. Um, we are still number one. Somehow, a show that's... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marissa. We are here. Somehow, a show <laughs> that is... We're four episodes behind, but, you know, when people are following us and recapping, like, recapping with us and maybe either finding the show for the first time or time shifting and DVRing or going back, you know, some of the people say on iTunes and then YouTube that they're going back and rewatching the show. So we appreciate all of that and no word yet as to whether the show is going to be canceled or not. 
uh, we hope it stays because we love it. But even if it does go away, we're going to finish this season because NBC is going to finish the season. So, and like we've said for the last couple of weeks, tell your friends to watch because oh, it's yeah. so good. Get, get, get it off the chopping block. It's a good show. Yeah. But in the meantime, thank you for listening and downloading us um, on iTunes and commenting. We read all your comments. Thank you very, very much. We appreciate them. They're all very, very, very sweet. And on YouTube as well. Um, so let's 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 talk about the episode specifically. Um, and then Julia, what anything that what leapt out at you in this episode in general? Hannibal. Oh man, I'm fascinated by that guy yeah. because I'm so drawn into him. And you know, we as as audience members, we know what the characters don't know, and that he's yeah. crazy town, yeah. and he is so just terrifying, such a terrifying character. But I'm so interested in him in the way that he is conditioning all these characters that are brought before him. So you have um, Will, first and foremost, mm-hmm. uh, and he is just, I mean, he's in that guy's head. He is he has become a friend. He's be- more than just his doctor. He's become a confidant. He's feeding his dogs. Yeah. You know, like, they're pally-pally. What, what's he feeding the dogs? I think he makes his own sausage. sausage. I'm just saying, <laughs> I think he's got his own sausage press. I think it's those special, dogs had a taste of something, something. Yeah, he gave it a little uh-huh. squeeze. Yeah. He gave it a little, like, he, yeah, this guy. Uh-huh. But, it, I mean, okay, this is just, now I'll let you finish your take, but is okay. Will, it, it, is he befriending Will? I mean, is Will buying it? Cause I, I, I always get this, like, hostility from Will. When they're in the room together and Lecter's asking the questions of professional to professional, like, I get, there's a level of hostility that comes from Will that's like, like, I don't even want to be here. Like, I don't want to answer this question. or put in, But I yeah. think you have a level of hostility from Will towards everyone. Right. He seems to have that sort, of, that sort of facade no matter what he does. But he actually seeks out Hannibal on his right. own. You know, uh, oh, shoot, maybe, that was the, maybe that's the next episode. I'm going to reference right. it anyway. I'm it's doing right. it. It's happening. <laughs> I'm jumping forward in time. <laughs> no, we, we, we already recorded. We already recorded. We already You've already seen it, guys. Yeah, you know. Um, he, Recording this out of order. You know, so he, he gets picked up by the cops sleepwalking, and he goes to Hannibal first thing in the morning. Right. Um, he, I mean, in this episode, he's having Hannibal watch his house, watch his, the one thing he loves more than anything, which are his, his dogs, his right. strays, the loves of his life. Right, right, right. Well, and their their deal is is not necessarily professional, right? That's what Hannibal said to Jack. Like these, the, this is not uh, this is not a professional thing. My conversation with Will, I can't, you know, uh, Hannibal can't talk about 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 Bell, but but he can talk. He can, but he uh, he can talk about Jack because I'm sorry, he can, he can talk to Jack about Will because they're not seeing each other professionally. They're just having conversations. So I mean, obviously, I think, but I think every time Will has, I mean, not Will, I'm sorry, Hannibal has a conversation. He can't help himself. Like he is, it's just he is constantly moving people and moving pieces of the puzzle that he, in, into the into the form he wants them into. Well, that's to what I mean like this is your this is your point like you, the way he touches people and sort of seems to be uh what's the word you not manipulating but like uh, influencing condition. with, conditioning. Conditioning, he's conditioning them. yeah, great. So he's conditioning he's conditioning Will and maybe he's conditioning he's, Abigail. He's making them dependent on him. Um okay. I mean he's so he's so intuitive. I mean I think that's why Will likes him so much is that Will probably thinks he's the only guy out there who really understands him and who really listens to him and doesn't think that he's crazy right because well, Hannibal's crazy well he's nuts but <laughs> to but to what end this is a question I keep asking even from episode one to now I mean we know that Hannibal's Hannibal Hannibal the cannibal Hannibal well, Lecter but but you know this isn't this isn't you know uh the following so well, to, there's no master plan well he's the so. Chesapeake Ripper I mean there is a master plan I mean he's got he's gonna keep he's keeping tabs on everybody who would be the group of people that would be that are sent out to catch him is it a keep your enemies Close and your enemies closer. What is, well, I, uh, what's but I think, he, yeah, keep your friends, friends close, close and your enemies, enemies closer. closer. Thank you. Uh, but I think it goes further than that for him because I think he's had them on lock for a long time. I think it, I think he's having a good time too. I think I there's more say, to it. This is right. fun. I think he's playing games. And 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 I said this last week. You know, he he's making art on some level, and Will recognizes that art. And I think it's interesting that the two of them really. Uh, I think that what Hannibal wants from Will on a personal level. Is that recognition of uh, that that what he's doing is beyond what a normal serial killer, quote unquote, would be doing? Yeah. What I'm doing is is be- it's more it's elevated, it's better. Right. I'm not making hamburgers. I'm making I'm 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 making a, a bacon wrap filet. No, and he's putting, not making hamburgers. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, but that's for real. Though. I mean, that's his deal. If you want to use the chef the chef uh, allegory, he's not laying out hamburgers for people. Right. He's not throwing a backyard barbecue. He's doing a five course full gourmet meal. Yeah, and, he is. And uh, and uh, you know, who's coming? That's not important. But right. 
But uh, but that's what I think is interesting. Will can recognize that, and so he wants that from Will. But at the same time, what Will needs from him is someone who could recognize all of Will's stuff. Can you imagine trying to explain that shit to a, a new therapist? Hey, yeah. so uh, nice having you here. What does he do for a living? Oh, I chase psychopaths. <laughs> yeah. And how do you do that? Uh, I can really empathize with them. I completely get in their heads. Let's start the session. How's your yeah. mom? Uh, uh, yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Well, and he also seems to, like, you know, he's got... You know, you mentioned, uh, you know, Will, and I mentioned Abigail, but, you know, it's also got Jack. Like, he's, you know, Jack, he's always having... Oh, regular dinner guests. Regular dinner guests. Jack loves his food. Jack cannot wait to get a meal from Hannibal. <laughs> Jack's the like, top oh, of the food okay. chain. And it's always, I, I love, I wrote, really, it's, it's, a, it's a modified boudoir. It's always a modified something. Yeah. It's oh, a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the way he throws that in somehow. And, and, and Lawrence is not asked yet. Uh, Jack's never asked. Yeah, what, what, what's what the modification there? there? Oh, it's, a, it's a modified boot ball. What? what? Yeah. Huh? Enjoy it. Can we beautiful. just mention real fast, that was the first time we got a glimpse into uh, a, a Hannibal being an actual cannibal chase. Yeah, that, ah, well, that was the first time that we... Yeah, you actually saw him chasing the guy down. Oh, the guy, the, the rabbit like who didn't... calling it a rabbit, but yeah. it's a dude. It's not a rabbit. Rabbit didn't move quick enough. It didn't hop fast enough. It didn't hop fast enough. It was, it was three quick cuts. It was, it was th yeah, three cuts, and that's all we needed. We had the guy running. We had the, the meat being Skin, right. yeah. skinned, and then we had the saute. Yeah. Let, me ask you, let me ask you a question. <laughs> all, all you need. need. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. It's like, oh. If you're sitting at dinner and someone tells you you're eating rabbit tongue, didn't they say rabbit tongue, was no, it? Oh, no, it was rabbit tongue. tongue. No. Oh, it was just, it was just straight rabbit. rabbit. Yeah. I'm getting my... So I'm it's getting a, my it's, it's a, I don't know my French, but it's a boudoir. A boudoir. Modified. 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 Boudoir. <laughs> All right. I, oh, no. Good stuff, man. Yeah, that was upsetting in an I'm awesome sure way. Yes. Yeah. In the best way what, possible. What, what in the beginning, I'm sorry, in, in episode one, we did have that kind of scene where we saw uh, Hannibal the depressing lungs. the lungs. Yeah. Which, oh, that's true. Which seemed, to, which seemed to mean that, like, you know, that it, they said it but didn't say it. Yeah. It's, guy. it's someone's lungs. Yeah. Anyway, so. For, um, the yeah, no, that's it. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, uh, which, what, one of the interesting things about this episode was the blow-up between uh, Dr. Bloom and, 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 uh, and Hannibal. Right. When, when he pulls, uh, when he pulls um, Abigail out. And that, that, that w w again, this is why I was, I was, I'm so irritated that they pulled the episode, because now episode five didn't make as much sense with, with the tension between the two of them. And going further, I mean, she was pissed. Right. And she was right. And you didn't, we didn't know that, if, unless you went back and found it on, on iTunes. Right. Um, but she, you know, he he goes and he pulls Abigail out, and then he tells her, "Oh, she's on half a volume," and you know, and and, and well, she's yeah, that's rich. She's tripping her ass off. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. The uh, bow, bow, the tea, bow. the little mushroom tea. Oh. But, I, but I do. I want to ask you, Julia, about you know, back to the um, uh, the manipulation or the uh, conditioning, yes. if you will, um, with Doctor Bloom. So was was he flirting with her? There was a moment, wasn't there? I mean, was he, I mean he's, he's charming there. He's got well, the yes, Windsor knots and he's got had, the custom shirts and the vests. She had a little googly eyes there for a minute. She's a little googly. With her little fancy beer. Fancy beer. And the fanciest, biggest glass ever. Where did he pull and, that from? And you knew, and you knew uh, Lecter's not you know, drinking beer. Like, you knew he's going to have his, I, I, absolutely, his oh, wine. Of course not. I could swear she, she batted an eyelash or two at him. I felt a little something was going on uh, there. Was was that, is that part of the conditioning and the manipulation? Quite possibly. Something about that scene felt very flirty. I don't know if yes, it was just me looking at her legs the whole time, but I don't know what's going on. But it was just me. Easy guy. I don't know what happened. She's flirting with you. Yeah, it's probably with me. I, with I saw it right through the TV. <laughs> I think Will's going to eventually be at a crime scene for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pendulum. <laughs> shoom, shoom. <laughs> shoom, shoom. All right. Um, no, so that's, yeah, I, I thought that was it. It felt like, so be, because of that little flirtation or whatever was going on there, or Hannibal's. Seduction he slash also had, thing. had his little his seduction word, phrase his little flirty phrase. What do you say? Passion or what was it? Passion is good. Keeps the blood pumping. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah That's Hannibal. Swirling the old. Uh -huh. That's right. Keani keeps the blood pumping. Yeah. Hannibal. Uh -huh. She was like, oh, I like that. Ooh, the blood does pump. This, <laughs> but this is <laughs> this is all probably all the more knot. reason. Look at that knot. <laughs> That's the Windsor knot. Right? That's the Windsor knot. <laughs> I think that's a double Windsor. Oh, double it Windsor. might even be a triple. Well, I don't even know if you can do that. Such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a knot that big. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know if you can do that. Um, but this makes sense. This makes would make sense. The re I bring that up, the flirtation up, because it makes sense as to why she was so betrayed and pissed. Because there's a little sort of uh, there was a little professional courtesy here. Like she comes over like. A little, maybe a little flirtation, a little professional courtesy. She's sharing information with a colleague, a fellow doctor, and then by the end, you know, he's taking liberties that she didn't, you know, 
and appreciate. So what the I, hell? Yeah. yeah. So I think that you know, I think that made her a little, little more. She felt a little taken advantage of. Because, Give him an inch, she'll take a mile. Yep. Oh, you know what's funny to me is is the, is that the table was set for her already. Oh, yeah. So he knew she was coming. Yeah. And so, I mean, that is such a balls move. Like, hey, I'm going to take your patient out. Then I'm going to take her to my house. Yes. Dr. Then Dr. Boom should be here. Yeah. Again. In about 25 minutes. In the meantime, you should take some shrooms. Yes. And let's see if Dr. Bloom notices you tripping your ass off. <laughs> that is the kind of balls. This His he balls does. are as big as his knot. The man <laughs> is... <laughs> Balls like a knot. I mean, balls like a triple Windsor. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> and like you gotta wonder, like, is he just it's like, hey, I'm just trying to see what's gonna happen next. Yeah, see if I yeah. can dance out of it. Here I go. Yeah, the I you know. Uh he went off to the kitchen to make a um, a modified, you know, something. <laughs> right. <laughs> Modif- <laughs> modified somebody. A protein scramble of some sort. Right? Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, modified somebody, yeah. <laughs> modified somebody. Okay, so let's. So you know, yeah. So the the lector the lector thing. I, I what I, yeah. That was oh, that was great. I mean, I, I don't know the whole. That was really the whole. You know, um, seeing lector. You're right. Seeing lector have his hands on everyone in that different way and these different manipulations is really fascinating. I don't know to what end, but it, maybe he's just but playing them. He's getting them. deeper and deeper and yeah. deeper in each and every one, and he's getting he's, he's got everybody. more liberties, and yeah. he's he's getting a little cocky. Yeah, he's, well, he is getting a little cocky. I wonder if that will hopefully. I wonder if that will, if that will be his undoing, you know, yeah. his 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 cockiness. But he's a little too smart for that. But we'll see. Well, we all know. What it's about eventually? So let's talk about Molly Shannon, and and and, and her and her family. Yeah. Created, you know, I mean, just you know that that was you know Molly Shannon very funny. Very very funny gal. This one not so funny. Not so much. Uh, you know, it's not it, so funny here. You got Scott Thompson and you got Molly Shannon. You got two like brilliant comedians that yeah. are now doing some dramatic stuff on the yeah. same show. It's kind of crazy to me. Here's the thing about Molly Shannon, and, and, and I want what's your take on the whole family thing. But my thing about Molly Shannon is, as a comedian, as when she's on Saturday Night Live, she always sort of seems like she even in, even in her interviews with her, she's I, and I love her, but she balances on the verge of like a little nutty, right? She's like just just seems like. She could go either way, right? Like yeah. she's funny, but almost like little. So, so you're saying it's probably good for cocktails, but you might have a boiled well, rabbit no, if you it's, go home. It's just, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> you might, exactly. you might. <laughs> it's like it's the re, I, it's when you What's see the you get her and she's doing her thing. It's like I don't know which way she's gonna go, but she's it's always funny. So here when we see her and she's not funny and she's going the other way crazy. It kind of made sense. I'm like, oh well, there you are. There well, there is. there she is. There she is. So I don't know. So the family, Joe, talk, talk, talk to me about this whole uh, thing. Oh, well, Stockholm Syndrome all over the place. And and I think this is, for me, this is one of the most fascinating, like, uh, psychological things that can happen to us. Mm-hmm. Um, Stockholm Syndrome, for those of you who don't know, it's a, I will read you the definition, a curious Uh-oh. psychological fact that many people who are abused or in hostage situations begin to side with their captors or those who abuse them and victimize them. It's called Stockholm Syndrome because of a famous hostage case that took place in Stockholm, Sweden, yeah. in which the victim actually defended her captors in court. Much to everyone's surprise. So um, so you have these boys that she's clearly kidnapped, and and they have created this family. Now, you got to wonder. We don't really get the backstory. We don't find out what happened to, to Molly Shannon's character's family, although you have right. to assume that she did something terrible to them. I'm sure. Odds are. Odds I, are. I doubt it involved a flood. I'd be yeah. willing to bet it involved a but, gun. But there, was, there was a line. Wasn't there a line, though? She, I thought she said something like, I don't know. I think there was a line that hinted to what may have happened to her old family. I think some crazy line that was like, I don't remember. I'm sorry. I didn't it, 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 whatever it was, it didn't leap out at me as like a, a, like no, a lock. No, no. But it, was I, like, it was something like, you know, families go away or something. Something weird. Yeah. Right? You know, something like, you don't know. Go ahead, Jim. There, 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 was something, <laughs> there was something particularly screwed about having just well, the diner scene where everybody's sucking yeah. on milkshakes. Mm-hmm. And she's got that, ooh, just excited Molly Shannon, shoulders up, everything's great. I'm like, superstar. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you just whacked the family at Christmas. You guys are crazy. Yeah. And and the boys are sucking. But that one kid, CJ, the older kid. Yeah. Now, he's he's the uh, he's the linchpin of the thing, I sure. think. Because once you've got one kid like that, then the other kids, it's almost like... Uh, uh, you know, if, if if you were a creeper, you'd want. If you were a creepy guy, you'd want to have a wife and kids because then you're you're okay. Everybody's gonna, you know, you've gotten the stamp of approval from the community. And it's the same thing with something like this. I would imagine you've got the one kid to tell all the other kids, no, no, it's okay here, it's okay. Just yeah. stick around. Everything's gonna be fine. Don't freak out. This is your new family. And uh, I, God, what a crazy, what a crazy mind f for all these these kids. That's all. So wait, so so did CJ got shot in the leg, but he he survived. Shoulder. 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 But he survived. Looked like it. All right. And then Land on the barbecue, Molly though. Sh- He's going to be messed Molly up. Molly Shannon, dead or alive? Oh, alive. Shoulder. Alive. Shoulder. 
This is Hollywood. No one shots. ever gets killed by a shoulder shot in Hollywood. It's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> it's shoulder shot. It'll be fine. Yeah. Physiologically impossible. Right? It's it physiologically out. impossible to die from a shoulder wound in Hollywood. It's make, it's Cannot sure. happen. What happened? In fact, you don't even need to go to the hospital. All you need to do is go to the back of the ambulance for the wrap-up scene. Right. <laughs> so could, would, like, would you say that they've left the door open a little bit on this thing? Because it feels like that little that exchange with Lauren Fishburne and then like in the smaller kid. You know. Oh yeah. Can I ask real fast why wasn't that kid in handcuffs? He's just chilling in the back seat with Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. No one's watching him. It, the fact of the matter is, this kid was about to kill his family. The kid was packing a gun. I mean, if Agent, he was just hanging out. I true, but if, if but Agent anyone, Jack anyone? Crawford can't handle a kid, that's uh, Morpheus uh, we're talking about. Uh, <laughs> like, if he can't, he's got to do. Just, hey kid, put down the gun. You want a red pill or you want a blue pill? <laughs> I'll tell you what though, when he did when, when he did uh, storm when they stormed the backyard. You know, I almost called him Morpheus. Uh, <laughs> Jack had the shotgun and the shades on and the trench coat. I was like, oh, snap. Uh, where's Trinity? Uh, Why is he? I'm like, Morpheus. Uh, <laughs> oh, there's, oh, snap drop. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it was great. So anyway, so yeah. Um, but Asian marksman chick, she got him. Asian flirty chick. Yeah. I got to come up with a better name for Asian, her. Maybe. Asian <laughs> McFlirty? Asian McFlirty. That's not what I called her. I said Asian Flirty Chick, but Asian McFlirty is better. Okay. No, it's not. That's no. terrible. You said that. Asian I didn't say it. McFlirty. I, oh. That's what I... Mm. Oh, wait. What did no, you say? You no. no, I said Asian. You did. Okay. I said the Asian Flirty Chick, but that's not fair. All right. Well, there it is. <laughs> At any rate. Um, so the Lost Boys. So the Lost the Boys. That's what they, what, they were, what they were calling them. Yeah. Um, th these were grim murders. These weren't just like, th oh, this is yeah. this was not a, 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 a push the button and the house is going to blow up. Not that yeah. that would have been much better, but this was up close, personal. Methodical. Yeah. And 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 really, really gruesome, grim stuff. I think it's, but that's part of the psychology. That's part of the whole Stockholm thing. It's like, you know, now that you're my family now, let's go. You have to go and be the one to get rid of your old family. And once say you goodbye. see, yeah, say goodbye. You gotta say goodbye. Say goodbye, and then you know, you're, okay, well, that now they're gone, and now let's go. You know, and so that's it's really, really saving I, the mom for last. Yeah, I don't know, guys. I'm kind of, you know, uh, say. I mean, I'm all for the 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 episode and seeing the episode, but I'm kind of with NBC and pulling this one. I don't know. I just it's kind of rough. I, I don't like seeing kids with you know with guns and killing parents and kids and a whole. I don't know if I want to see that. I don't know. I don't want to see it either, but there's a lot of stuff in this show that is no. It, sure. you know, I think that's my point. I guess is in for a dime, in for a dollar. If now you're you get, gonna you get green that. light Hannibal, sure. then 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 you gotta green light Hannibal. You can't and, pick yeah. and choose. Yeah, well, you, well, you can, but yeah. I mean, at, at, but earlier in the process, that's all. That's all I'm trying to I say. Agree. Like, it's... like you, you, you've got how many different spots in in, in the process of, of of shooting an episode like that where you go where you go. Okay, we've already we've already approved the script. We've approved the changes in the script. We've right. approved the shooting schedule. We've approved the, the dailies. And all of a sudden, when it's all said and done, you got all this character development that's built into the episode. And you pull it, then all that character development is gone. And True. and that's anyway. That's that's the only this point I had key. about that. This was a very a lot key. of it was well, well, yeah, episode. Well, I, think, I think that's what we tried. That. And, and in all fairness, we didn't really to give a full because the, the webisode stuff. We we really need to. I wouldn't need to, but I guess in the webisode stuff maybe kept the character development. That's the whole point. That was the whole point. That's of whole it. because right. they, they left out the. The, the kids killing They just stuff. erased all the well for my the money. I'm not family stuff. You know, kids with guns and kids. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not on that unless it's Katniss. That's okay. a bow and arrow. Okay, the bow and arrows. <laughs> Marissa and blades and blades. Oh, okay, maybe some blades. <laughs> like we said before, only if it's good old fashioned wholesome <laughs> kids <laughs> murdering kids. I mean, you know. Anyway, all right. So the, okay. So the, the last thing I really want to touch on in, in about this episode is the, the overarching theme of family. I think it's very interesting how. Um, we saw a lot. So we had, you know, while we had this case about this fake, this family sort of going on, we also had Hannibal and Abigail bonding in this way, which is clearly, you know, there's some sort of, you know, this is what I also what I can't figure out. I don't understand what Hannibal's attraction to. I said it last week. I'll say it again. What's Hannibal's attraction to Abigail? Like, it's, it's why is he, why is he effing with her? Like, I feel like he's just messing with her, and I don't understand why. Like, he, she can't. He doesn't want a sidekick or an apprentice. He doesn't want like why is he why is he like keep bringing her in and mentoring her and like he even said and like will be our secrets and he goes you and I will have many secrets together like really well I, I said last week I think that 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 it's possible that he recognizes something in her that that uh, that that the, the average bear won't see because he's you know like like you know is attracted to like right so maybe he sees in her the madness that her father had maybe he sees that that could uh, that that could manifest. Um, it's also possible 
that he, he I, I've said it for a while, I really think he enjoys these games, and there is no better game to play than the girl who's going to be most watched by all these other people that he's keeping track of that's going to be in this mix already with all these people that are tracking the murder, I mean, the, his murders, right? I mean, he's the Chesapeake uh, Ripper, right? So all these people, are, they're tracking his murders for years. He's in, up in all their business, and this is the girl that got drawn into all this because Dad killed all these other people. They're all invested in her personally. Who better to fuss around with and mess with than this one? I, I think to me that if, if, you're, if your deal here is to play a game, is to play a psychological game, if you're as bored as I think he is with everything else and he's so driven he can't stop himself, the guy makes his own sausage out of people, I mean, th then I think that this, is, this has got to be the most interesting game you can think of. I, I, yeah, I, it feels like he's grooming her for something, though. Like, what's he grooming her for? Like, to be his, his Robin, his Batman? I don't you know. Um, I don't know. I, I, there's the whole, I mean, we've talked a lot about family in this episode and, and here on After Buzz. Maybe, maybe Hannibal's lonely, guys. Maybe mm. he sees something in her that she's very vulnerable at this moment mm -hmm. where he can really get in there, shape, mold her mind, um, because she's already been a part of something quite gruesome right. already. She's right. already eaten people. Yeah. Her dad was feeding her people. Ugh. She's already in there. And now he's 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 building this this entire dinner, setting a place for for Dr. Bloom. Hmm. He's getting her all doped up. Yeah. He sits them down like one big happy family with people with women that he he's obviously attracted to Dr. Bloom. We've done that. We've mm -hmm. seen that. Now he said he's feeling paternal towards Abigail as right. was Will. And maybe he's maybe he's creating a nice little family for himself. Hmm. What does Doctor Lecter's family do for fun? Well, <laughs> they don't go to Disneyland. I've got this idea. No. They <laughs> skip the Magic Kingdom altogether. <laughs> they sit in the mirror and tie triple Windsors. <laughs> <laughs> You've not got it right. Do it again. <laughs> it has to be bigger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, triple Windsor. Uh, and what about? Let, let's talk about these mushrooms. So he gives her. You know. What, what about them? I don't know, Joe. What about them? I, I don't know anything Joe. about them. You don't? Ever. Okay. Never. Uh, well, if you did. If I were to know things about it, it would be secondhand at best. Okay. So if, if from what you've heard. From what I've heard, they're great. About, about, <laughs> these, about these mushrooms. What, <laughs> what, what, is his, what is his motivation for giving her these mushrooms? What, I mean, he, what, she, what, what does he expect her to see or experience? I know he told her, but what? You know, now, from from what I've because it, it felt a little predatory to me. It felt that something about that scene felt very like guy in a trench coat, kind of like weird, sort of like you know, come on, well, let me give you a little, little something to make relax you a little bit. Let me give you a little something to make you. I, uh, I gotta say, every scene with her and him feels predatory to me. Uh, but yeah. but that's because we know better. I, right. If we were her, I don't know if it would necessarily feel that way. So he um, gives her the mushrooms to open her mind, and then he kind of like he leans back. Well, you know what 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 I've heard. What I've heard about the mushrooms. Just watch you trip balls. Go. What, <laughs> what I've heard about them uh -huh. is that that they tend to erase a lot of uh, a, a lot of our ability to to create form around us. A lot of our ability to create all the sociological forms that we all kind of agree are important, like right. all the social hierarchies that we all all cling to, all of the all of the ideas about society that we all cling to. They're all fabrications. They're all things that we all agree are so. So we make them so. But from what I've been told. Mm -hmm. The mushrooms tend to do away with that, which I would imagine would get you closer to the heart of whatever it is that ails you. So I can kind of see why that would be a, a you know a, a psychologist tool from what from from what I've heard. From what you've heard. From what I've heard. Now, word on the street. Word on the street is so. I mean, what I mean, but, what, so as as a psychologist tool, but is he really trying? This is what I'm getting at. If, if either way, I don't like it. Even if he's playing pure psychologist, you're point. right not to like it. Okay. <laughs> Anything he does to Abigail, we should not like. You're right. There should never be a time where like, good call, Hannibal. As, That's as, the way I'd have done it. <laughs> I bet she feels better. Especially prepare, especially preparing a, uh, right. a, a good boudoir. Like of all the things he probably yeah. fed her, the shrooms are the least likely exactly. to be made of human. Well, so. unless they came from uh, your boy. On this earth. Unless they oh. came from uh, your boy in episode two. Oh, yes. Ooh. Ooh, was he growing shrooms? That was a crazy sound I just made. Was he growing shrooms in the people? I mean, mushrooms, but was he growing shroom shrooms? I don't know. Yeah, Magic no, I, I've heard that they call him that. That was great to say. What, 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 is, what is the word on the street? What do your people on the street <laughs> tell you about that, Joe? So listen, either way, like if he's if he's a doctor, and this is his diag this is his treatment, his diagnosis is I'm gonna 
figure out a way to open her mind and give her some mushrooms as a legitimate doctor. Okay, that's kind of, uh, by your definition, by the people you've heard from, that that could be useful. But as, as Hannibal Lecter, the guy who's, you know, got a plan and trying to get something from Abigail, what, what does he want from her with the mushrooms? What is he hoping that she does or says? Oh, or man. Or is he just effing with her? Oh, man, it's crazy. I couldn't tell you in one million years. It just feels like he's <laughs> like, here, drink some of this. Eat yeah. this. Hey, mushrooms, hey, try is some it, of this. Is it just... Is it just a game? See what, what he can draw out of her? Right. See maybe if she is the possible protege that he's been looking for? Because she, she did say she has to get used to lying. Yeah. And maybe this will take that and take those inhibitions down and she'll, you know, spill it. So from the people that you've heard from, Judd, is it? I, I wonder, I, I just had a thought when you were saying that, it, it, if, if maybe it wasn't a matter of, of him wanting to create, I mean, he's very controlled and he's very, he's very uh, methodical. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he did not want to create certain images for her to right. see and to absorb. I mean, if you see if you see something on on a on on a, on a on a on a conscious level or subconscious level, subconscious level, pardon me, whatever you visually see is real. And so, if you're if you're tripping your ass off and you see something, I would imagine if, if he can control the imagery that you're seeing that you're receiving, mm -hmm. he can control his image. Uh, I'm sorry, or her image of him. And if he wants to create an image of family with him and Doctor Bloom, and she's tripping her ass off, and he already had that place set for Doctor Bloom. So mm -hmm. maybe that was his plan, is to kind of set up this imagery for her. Well, it worked, yeah. It worked. Because but the last thing she said was, what do you see? Family. Family. So maybe that was the goal there. Very creepy, by the but, way. But, you know, my, my, from what I've been told yeah, about, about the magic mushrooms, mm -hmm. I, they are fairly unpredictable. So, I mean, to you, I would not necessarily, A plus B does not always equal C. From from what people have said to me, right. Um, so I don't. I think it's kind of a gamble there that you're going to get Doctor Bloom, then you're going to get that imagery at you know at that time but at that place. He, but he rolled the dice. He rolled the dice, and I think that was what he wanted. I think that okay, was my. I'll buy it. I'll buy it. So we have the, the final shot of her coming in, sitting down, and the, and the imagery was created, family, and then so again we so that we have that theme. So we have Lecter's family because you know him and Bloom and him and Abigail, and then we have uh, we had poor Molly Shannon's family that was. Not so great. And then so great. our last shot, we have, and then we have, uh, of course, uh, Jack talking to to, um, to, Bell. to Bella. To Bella. And Bella doesn't talk to Jack. Yeah. Sure does. About, about family. And then we see our last shot, we see Will with his family. Will with his family of strays. Of strays out in Wolf Trap. Aww. Poor Will. You know, it's a no woman, no cry. I mean, the man, the man yeah. is all alone well, with a bunch of dogs. Not for lack of trying. The, your, what right. did you call her? The little flirty McAgent, Agent McFlirty. What did you call her? <laughs> she, she would happily lie down with the strays with him. Yes, I'm telling you. Well, we'll see. We'll see. She would. Well, uh, let's, let's, let's she would. She, oh, she, oh, yes, she well, has deep plans. Let's uh, <laughs> let's very quickly wrap it up and, and jump into our, our predictions. Ooh. I don't know. I don't know. I predict NBC will pick up season two if we all tell our friends to watch it. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Okay. I pre oh god, I don't know. I've already seen the next episode. I know what's happening. Jump into episode uh, uh, six. Okay, we had Angel Maker. Um, I predict I predict Will spiraling down and getting dangerously close to to stepping over the edge and um, and going a little. That shit crazy. Can I say that? Yeah, you, you did. did. Okay. You Excellent did. job. <laughs> I predict that the show, that this After Buzz podcast will single-handedly save Hannibal. Yes. And y'all are welcome. Because we're yes. number one. And thank you very much. You guys are all listening and all downloading. We're number one. We're going to take all this information and give it to noted network publicist Teresa Jane Law. She's going <laughs> to she's gonna give it to her people at NBC. And it's going to change everything. That's my prediction. Boom. I love that prediction. Joe Flippo, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on the Twitters at Joe Flippo, and you can find me here at After Buzz. We do Mad Men, and we do Bates Motel, which is coming up on the season finale, Manjana. And uh, what else we got? That's it. Uh, I'm at I'm on, on Twitter, on Twitter, at Julia Carely, my name. And, you know, I'm here with my Joes. Woo! <laughs> hey, my with, Joes! Who would want to be hanging with the Joes? <laughs> That's right. Place to be. I'm, I'm Joe Braswell. You can find me on Twitter at Joe K. Braswell. And here with doing Bates Motel season finale and Mad Men and, uh, and on Grantland. So thank you very much. Woo! Yay. See you next week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later.
The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.